In the Ramayana, we hear about the Ashram of Agastya and Lopa Mudra in uh, Dandakaranya on the slopes of Vintyas. Rama, who is himself considered an incarnation of God, praises him as one who can do the impossible. The stories of Agastya humbling the Vindhya as well as balancing of the earth and the killing of the demons Vatapi and Il Ilvela are recounted again in Ramayana. It is here that we hear about the powerful Aditya Hridaya Stotram composed by Agastya. In keeping with the many legends where Agastya is said to have helped the gods themselves, the story goes that when Rama was fatigued while fighting the battle with Ravana, it was Agastya who recited the Aditya Hridayam to give him power. We now move to the Vanaparva of the epic Mahabharata. Here again is uh, recounted the incredible powers of Agastya in terms of ingestion and digestion. The story of Agastya drinking the ocean and humbling the Vindhyas as well as the killing of the demon Vatapi are narrated here. Here also we find the story of the marriage of Lopamudra and Agastya. Now that we have seen that Agastya is mentioned continuously over such a long span of time, let us make a bird's eye view of the contribution of Agastya in terms of knowledge. A part of, uh, apart from the hymns in the Vedic text, his contributions range from literature, medicine, martial arts, philosophy, predictions, religion, to gemology, and it is going like that. Is there one person doing all these? Well, we will touch on these subjects in detail a little later. So, apart from the vast treasure of knowledge, what else is Agastya known for? Apart from the stories and literature attributed to him or about him, we see him honored with places being named after him. So, we see temples uh, for him and uh, of images in temples that uh, are said to have been consecrated by him. We also see him featured in many Shaivai temples in the length and breadth of India and Southeast Asia. So what is it about Agastya that so much importance is given to him in literature, in stories and in places? Let us take a look at the geographical footprint of Agastya legend. Deep in the forest of Western Ghats is one of the most important places associated with Agastya. Agastya Malay or Agastya Kudam or Podigai Hills is located at the border of the southern state of Kerala in India. It's a forest filled with wild animals like bears, tigers and elephants. A 24-mile order trek through the dense jungles passing by rivers and um, traveling very difficult trails, one reached the base of Agastya Malay Peak in the Pudigai mountain range in Adirimala. The journey is not over yet. Those that seek to see and worship Agastya must now negotiate a 400 peak of a sheer rock. Ropes have been fixed to the rock to assist in climbing. But it is not a climb for everyone. A thousand scales this peak by the sheer power of their devotion to the great sage. On the top of this peak stands a stately statue of Agastya, treated with the same deep reverence today as it was done thousands of years ago. It is the thick tropical forest famed by hundreds of varieties of medicinal plants rare orchids and wildlife that Agastya is said to still remain. For me, this is an incredibly special place. It is also in this mountain range that three rivers originate. They are the Karamaniyar Neyar that flows towards the state of Kerala. 
and the Tamra Bharani River that flows down towards the neighboring state of Tamil Nadu. In about 155 kilometers, the river descends in a waterfall, which uh, is also named after the great sage, the Agastya Falls near Papanasham, is also said to be the location where Shiva appeared with Parvati to Agastya in his wedding attire. Probably many of you have heard the story of the marriage of Shiva and Parvati. According to the story, a large number of gods, peoples, ganas, animals and other creatures were gathered on the Himalayan mountains to watch the blessed wedding of Shiva and Parvati. Because of the weight of the multitude, the earth started to tip. It was then that Shiva asked Agastya to go to the south and using his yogic powers set right the balance to the world. From Kerala, as you journey further north, you will arrive at Talakaveri, the birthplace of River Kaveri in the neighboring state of Karnataka. Here too, Agastya is a household name. For legends state that he used to turn his wife Kaveri into water and carry her in his Kamandalu to keep her safe in the forest while he meditated. The gods, however, had uh, other plans. Feeling sorry for the Pratchett lands, they prayed to Lord Ganesha for help. Taking the form of a crow, Lord Ganesha toppled the Kamandalu and then slow Kaveri giving much needed water to the states around her. There are a lot of stories actually. In case there is any confusion on the Agastya's wife, the story goes that Lopamudra died and came back as Kaveri. From there, if you make a small uh, decretion uh, and you go towards the southeast for about 250 kilometers, you will come to an old Grinald Chemba tree. Its, its botanical name is uh, Thumeria. This tree, which is said to be over 1500 years old, is said to have been planted by Agastya himself. Again, we are looking at the incredible time and geographical range. Then as we travel back north towards Badami, you know Badami, also in Karnataka, it's in Karnataka, for another 560 kilometers, we come across the Agastya Tirtha Lake. I was uh, just a couple of months ago, I was there to scout for the location of a movie that, um, that I am directing. So the lake is said to be the location of the story of Vatabi and Ilvala. The story goes that Vatabi would turn into a god and Ilvala would cook him and feed him to travelers. Once they ate their food, Ilvala would say, Vatabi, come out. And out come Vatabi ripping the person's stomach. So the two demon brothers would then feast on that poor travelers. However, Agastya with his yogic powers knew what these brothers were up to. After finishing eating, he rubbed his stomach and said, Vadabi Jirno Bhava. And that was the end of Vadabi. 500 miles from there in, is the Godavari River where Agastya is said to have an ashram according to Mahabharata. If he choose to travel 1,700 uh, kilometers north from there, we will come to Uttarakhand, where an entire town is named Agastya Muni. Apart from the mountain, waterfalls, lake and tree being named after him, we see shrines of Agastya in several places, of, places in India. We also find shrines that he is said to have consecrated mainly to Shiva and it is called Agastishwara temples all over India.
ആഗസ്ത്യം